Hi everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews and the July Makes video. For the month of July, I finished up my aerial ensemble for my Disney Bounding in the Bedroom project. Last month I did the bra and underpants and then this month I did the corset that goes along with it. So let's take a look down at my workstation and I can show you the corset that I made. This is a free corset pattern that's available uh, by Arenia Black and this is called the Sonia Underbust Corset. I can link the pattern down in the description box below if you guys are interested in using it yourself. Um, but there are some more advanced techniques in this and that it doesn't provide any instructions and there's no seam allowances in the pattern itself. So you kind of have to know what you're doing ahead of time before you go ahead and make this pattern. If you want to learn more about the individual construction process of the corset, I can link the video up in the iCards above here. Uh, this is just my makes video, so I'm just gonna go over briefly the portions of the corset. So the exterior fabric is a stretch taffeta that I purchased from Fabric Wholesale Direct, uh, and I did it in two tones because I sort of wanted to pull in those two colors of Ariel's tail. Uh, I've chosen the darker teal or jade colorway for the center panel here, as well as the center panels in the back and then the lighter color for the side panels. I think it really helps to sort of narrow in that waist even more, which is great on this corset. I love how it turned out. So I've used an antique bronze busk in the center here. I just thought it looked the best. I have like silver and gold and antique bronze in my stash. So this is one I thought worked the best. And then on the interior of the corset is made with just a cotille fabric. So I flatlined the taffeta onto the cotille and then constructed it as if it was a single layer. And I really like how it turned out. Uh, of course, I've used the mint lacing in the back of the corset. I was, there was a question of whether I was gonna use purple or mint and I decided to go with mint since um, it, I thought it looked better with the completed corset. When I finished everything up, I thought it needed a little bit more decoration. And so I've gone with some sequins that I hand sewed on. I tried to make them densest up at the top here and then sort of like gradiate down into the panel below. These sequins were called mermaid sequins actually when I brought them home. Um, and hopefully you can see here that like they're green and then dark blue, depending on the angle, it's sort of like shifts and change colors, which I thought was really cool. And it sort of reminded me of like shimmering water or like sunlight coming down through water. I also think it helps to make it look like mermaid scales as well, but in a more like wearable, not costumey way. So really happy how these sequins turned out. Um, and I think it really brings something to the corset itself. If we take a look at the back of the corset, not as much to see here because it is just uh, those two-toned panels and the lacing. So that is the Sonia Underbust corset that goes with my finished aerial ensemble. For the rest of the project for July, I tried to fit them into this sort of like thematic grouping of like honey and bees and stuff like that. So hopefully you'll see that theme of yellow honey bees running throughout the rest of my projects. The first one I wanna show is a lemonade kit from Bra Builders. Uh, this is Bra Builders Kit of the Month. I made a Lansdowne bra for Bra Builders and sent that out already, so I can't show that to you. But what I have here is what I've made for myself out of that kit. So for the bra, I've chosen to do a Fenway bra. Uh, this is the Fenway bra from Orange Lingerie is the pattern. Um, I have altered it slightly to use a classic or day style wire, which is why you see that taller center front portion here with the little notch mark where the bridge connects between the two cuffs. Um, I really, really like this pattern now that I have it fitted to myself. It's super comfortable. I made a little bit of a mistake here. You can see one cup sits slightly higher than the other. Uh, I might be able to go back and unpick this and sort of fix it, but for now I'm not too bothered with it. I still think it looks really good and it feels pretty comfortable. Uh, it's just a slight cosmetic thing that doesn't look as great. Uh, I think this kit originally came with a yellow colorway of elastic called Sunshine and I've chosen to go in and use black instead. So I was thinking that like the honeybees could be taking pollen from the lemon trees and so that's why I thought it fit in here. So I've done the cup itself in this sheer black cup lining. Um, so there's traditional three piece cup that is the Fenway. So two bottom cup pieces and then the top here. And then because the lemon was a stretch lace, I could go ahead and make that an overlay cup on top. So it sort of disguises all of those seams. So all you really see is that sheer upper cup and then the lemon um, on the bottom and you don't really see where the seam line connects because the lace goes over top of it. It's the same thing that I did for my Lily of the Valley bra. Um, 
that I made a couple of months ago that was all white um, with this stretch overlay on top of it. So really liked how that turned out. I can definitely see myself making more Fenways in the future. And then to go along with the Fenway bra top, I do have a pair of Watson bottoms, again, in that lemonade kit. This is a black micro lycra that I've used in the center panel as well as the back of the undies. And then the side panels here are lace. So you can see, hopefully you can sort of see through them right there. Um, so it's just laced themselves. And then I've overlapped the scalloped edge of the lace and then sewn it down. So there's no, there's no like two seams that are sewn together and folded. It's actually like laid on top and stitched down. So that is it for the panties. I love this set. Um, I don't have anything lemony in my wardrobe, but I always really like the look of lemon. So I'm, I'm very glad to have this. So it's not very often that I get to show up one of the Bravo Blush kits for myself so quickly, but I was just so enamored with this lace that I wanted to make sure that I had my lemon bra immediately and I didn't wait. So that is my lemonade bra. Next up, I have a canary yellow lace that I purchased from the Taylor Made shop that I was really excited to get sewn up. So this is a relatively new pattern. I know in my plans video, I was back and forth of whether or not I wanted to buy this new pattern. And I, I was thinking that I was just gonna try to um, draft it myself, but I decided I just didn't have time for that either. So I, I broke down and I bought the pattern. I am not going to try to say the name of it because I will just butcher it. I think it's in French. I will pop up the name down here. Uh, this one is from Small Bobbins. And it was really, really interesting in the pattern they talked about what that word means. And apparently it's a type of bird that coincidentally has yellow feathers. So I thought, perfect for this. Uh, so it is designed for stretch material. The frame itself is lined in a non-stretch base, but the cups remain stretchy. And this is a single piece darted cup. So you can see there's a diagonal dart that comes from like the side wire line up to the apex. And then the rest of the cup is left pretty stretchy. I won't say this isn't the best fit on me, and so I probably need to do a little bit more work on the pattern. This uses a push-up wire, and I had a bunch of push-up wires in my stash because I bought them on accident. Uh, I like using demi wires a lot, and I purchased push-ups thinking that they were demis and they weren't. So the difference between the demi and the push wire, push-up wire is that the the demi wire follows the exact same shape as my regular wire and it just ends a little bit shorter. Um, the push up wire is a little bit more splayed out. So like instead of starting to come up like this, it's splayed out more this way. Um, and this design, this pattern was specifically designed for that wire and I don't have any other patterns for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Um, one thing that I don't like about the pattern is I feel like there's too much space here in the bridge. It fits okay, I just think visual, visually it looks a little bit too far apart and I would prefer it if that was sort of taken in a little bit and brought the, the cups up closer. That'll also help push everything more towards the center and give you a little bit more cleavage as well. But even though this is like my first time out trying this pattern, I'm, I'm still quite happy with how it turned out and I can go ahead and, can see, and see myself wearing this bra as well. Uh, so I did put some boning in these side channels as well as diagonally down here in the front and that is what the pattern calls for. I just wanted to make the, the pattern up exactly as written first before I started like making a lot of modifications to it. And then I also added a little bit of that stretch lace overlay on the back of the bra as well. So this is what it looks like from the inside. Uh, like I said, this, this is backed with like a non-stretch sheer cup lining and then the lace. I had originally put some sheer cup lining in the cup as well, but when I tried it on, I was getting some weird shapes. So I cut it out um, and it actually looks a lot better. It sort of like curves around the body because it's a stretch cup. So I think next time I do it, I would line this in something like a micro mesh that still maintains the stretch, but gives me a lining to help um, support the lace itself. So on the back, you can see what it looks like wh if, when it's um, clasped up and you sort of see that like, that lace edge that goes along the, the U-back connection. And I think that looks really pretty. I don't do that super often with mine. The only reason I went ahead and did it here is because I had some like scrap laces 
bits of lace left over after cutting all of this out that I wouldn't be able to get another cut piece out of. So I decided I would just go ahead and do that on the back. So I didn't waste any lace to do the back detail here. Um, I just was trying to use up the bits and bobs that I couldn't have used otherwise. So um, this one I'd say work in progress. I can, I can see myself using the pattern in the future, but it does still need some more work for me. And that is my yellow canary bra. Next up, I have a lace that I caught from Gravity by Grandy out in New Zealand, and it was perfectly fitting into this month's theme because it has sort of a honeycomb design like bees. Uh, so here is the lace bra that I made, and I've used the AFI Atelier Exquisite pattern. Again, patterns and materials are linked down in the description box below if you're interested in getting them yourself. So this one was a really interesting lace because it had like all of those yellow hexagonal designs on it, which reminded me of a honeycomb, but it also had this sort of like rose gold hexagon on it as well. And so I decided for the elastics on this, I would pull out that rose gold color and I used the rose ash um, elastics that I purchased from Bra Makery. And I think it looks really cool with this. I mean, I think the obvious thing would have gone yellow to go with this bra, but I think using the pink really changes the look of it. And I was really excited by it. So um, for this one, like I said, I used the AFI Atelier Exquisite Bra, which has these sort of like fanned design cups. And then on the, um, and then on the power bar piece on the end here, I made myself a separate cup overlay that sort of continued that arc of, of the lace edge that just goes across the power bar itself. And then I did the regular power bar behind. I did shorten my power bar just a little bit for this guy because, um, I don't know why. I just like proportionally, I thought it looked weird to have it start to extend out all the way up here because visually I kind of just wanted to cut it off much lower. So that is the outside of the bra. And here's what it looks like from the back. I just used some of like my nude power mesh because I didn't have anything that looked great with it. And on the inside, you can see a little bit more all of that, that nice dusty pink color um, that I've used in the elastics. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite patterns, the exquisite bra. I have a couple of patterns that I, I know if you watch my channel, I make them up all the time. Um, the Black Beauty bra, the Grace, and again, I think now the exquisite bra. Th there's just something about you know, when you want to make something that's really fast and like satisfying and you don't have to worry about fit or anything like that, it's nice to have some patterns like this that you can always fall back on and make up so you, so there's not a lot of work and, and effort put into it, but you get a really nice result in the end. So pretty happy with my beehive honeycomb bra. So next up, you can't have a honeycomb without also having honey bees. So I've made a bee themed bra as well. So this one is using the Bees on Latte embroidered bra tool from Emerald Erin. I really, really liked how this one turned out. I've used the Annie Myra's Grace pattern, though I have altered it slightly for this wider band along the bottom here. Um, this is basically the same bra that I made for Valentine's Day. And if you want some more information, on how this goes together and patterning of it, I can link it up in the eye cards above here. So one thing I did on this guy and I've gotten part of the way done is I've started adding a little bit more bees. Unfortunately, I have a fairly small cup size, so I don't get much bees on here. So on this particular cup itself, this bee I've added on top of it. You can see this bee runs right through the middle of that seam line here. Um, I wore it, I, I put the bra on and of course that was the apex of my bust and so you know what is there uh so i liked i i, I added the extra bee on top of it so sort of like disguise it a little bit i mean obviously you can still see um through the bra but it makes it a little bit more camouflaged and i'm going to go ahead and do that to the other side as well so all it is really is i just cut out some of the extra bees so the bees that are like in between my cut pieces that i couldn't necessarily get anything else out of so i cut out a bee like this um, and then I just pinned it on where I want to put the, the, a new bee and then stitched around the outside of the bee itself and then clipped away all the excess material. Um, so that's what I've done over here. You'll notice that this bee doesn't have any antenna and legs and that is because I've clipped away all the excess material, but I don't think that's a huge um, downside to it. Like I don't think if, I don't think anyone would notice that the antennas and stuff were missing. And I think it helps to get a little bit more consistent design of bees across. So I have a bunch of bunch more bees so I can go ahead and add some more on here. Just as many as I want. Let's see. 
but I wanted to go ahead and show you the bras I made it first before I started getting all artsy craftsy and adding more bees onto the tool itself. So um, it is using this super wide or one and a, one, I think it's one and three eighths inch wide elastic along the bottom. It makes it really, really comfortable. Uh, you do have to sort of like convert this into sort of the partial band style, which is that the elastics, instead of folding down into the band, they actually fold up into the cup. So I had to add extra seam allowance along the wire line in order to accommodate that. But I mean, that's a, a relatively easy thing to do and it's such a cool design. I really like how it turned out. So from the inside and back, it just really looks pretty nude and nondescript. I really, really like this bra because it's like a neutral, but it's still fun because it has the bees on it. Um, and it's pretty comfortable and I think it gives me some nice support. So that is my Annie and Myra's Grace bra with Bees on Latte from Emerald Erin. And the last bra that I have to show you today is using the Buttercups kit from Bra Builders. So for this bra, I decided I don't have any like more traditional strapless style bras, so I wanted to try it out. All of my strapless bras that I've made are long line and I do prefer the long line on me for strapless just because when you have it, when you have the elastic going around your waist, which is the smallest portion of your body, it keeps the bra sitting in place, right? It's not gonna like shimmer, shimmy down any further onto your hips because it's fit to your waist itself. Uh, so the problem with a long, with a strapless bra like this is what I find is that it starts like shimmying down my body throughout the day just because I do have a sort of like V-shaped torso. So this is, um, like the bra's gonna wanna find the, least resistance, right? And so up here is a lot wider on me than once you get lower, so it's gonna wanna like slip down. Um, and that is the case here as well. But I thought, you know, I just as an exercise and can I do it, I wanted to make a more traditional style strapless bra. Uh, the other thing that I don't love about strapless bras, just on me, it's a personal issue, is that because I have such a wide root, so wide side to side, I, and you have to cut the cup to just go to the top of the wires itself, I think that this looks a little disproportionate on me. I wish it was a little taller um, just for the way that it looks, but, there are certainly clothing items that I have where this bra would work and be useful. So I'm not upset that I made it. Um, I just don't think I'm gonna be making any more of this style strapless bras for myself. So that is what the outside looks like. So you can see it's a non-stretch lace in buttercup. Uh, I think I did a two-piece cup in here, vertical seam two-piece cup. And then I've just used all of Bra Builder's findings on the inside. I think what I've gone ahead and used is Ducky, which is their yellow findings that they launched this spring. I think that was this spring. I think this would also look really good with Topaz if you have it, as well as maybe like a cream color. Uh, any of those might look really good with this lace. So here's what it looks like on the inside. I have done a foam cup on the inside, especially in Strapless bras, I like to have a foam cup because it gives me a very consistent shape on the profile of it. Um, without having that vertical tension up at the top, I could end up looking a little weird in a strapless bra if I didn't put foam in it. Um, and then of course, I've done this thing, which I've done a couple of times in my bras lately, is just extending that lace out so that I can still keep the scallop along the side here. It means there is a little bit of overlap, there's a section here that should be stretched and isn't now because the lace isn't stretched, but it doesn't really affect the fit all that much on me. So that is the strapless buttercup bra. The last item that I have to show you guys today is a swimsuit. This one was inspired by one of the pins on my Pinterest board and I can pop up a picture over here so you see what the goal was. Uh, so this one I sort of drafted myself based off of my um, bodysuit block that I worked on earlier this year. So I added a waist seam right at my natural waist. One thing I think I didn't do quite well and I wish I would have changed is that in the original design, um, this V on the bust goes all the way down to the waist and mine goes about an inch and a half or two inches above the waist. I wish I had done that. The reason that I changed the angle of this was just because I was worried about how low the neckline was gonna be. Trying it on, I think that I do like where the neckline is 
but I, I think I could have just changed this angle coming down further so that it would look a little bit more like the inspiration instead of being so worried about getting a consistent uh, width on this triangle up here. What I was trying to do is can keep this width consistently all the way down, and I think I would have preferred sacrificing that consistency for the point to come to the actual waist itself. But I really like how this suit turned out. Um, this is using some golden, I think the color is called golden, and I purchased this from Fabric Fairy. And I'll link it down below. The pattern was all self-drafted, so that's not really something that you guys can pick up. And then on the back, I, again, I tried to copy as close as I could to the original design. I clicked through it because it was a shop listing so I could figure out how, what the back of the the suit looked like so I do have a scooped um, back this comes up a little bit higher than my natural waist I could have stood to drop this down a little bit lower uh, and then I have just the swimwear clicker in the back with the back band so I have the nice tension across my bust a lot of the suits I've been making lately that have the low scoop in the back I do find I'm lo losing support in the bust because there's not enough um, horizontal tension behind it so I think this is a really good way to sort of get that look of a scooped back but still have the same sort of support and i definitely can see myself using this in future bathing suits as well originally i wanted to do um, this as a cross strap in the back so i was thinking i would do it as a cross strap like this so you'd put the suit on and have the cross strap and then this would click over top of it but uh, I, I had the straps on and I tried the suit on just for like testing to see the size of it and to see how long I needed to make the straps and I decided that I kind of liked it better as just a halter neck tie along the top. Now it might be that it bothers me later on down the road um, having the halter neck tie up there and so I could always change this later and have these straps be something that do connect right back down here whether it's straight down or across. I'm thinking that straight down might look a little bit better with this back closure um, but I need to to go ahead and wear this suit out into the pool and let it let it get some use first before I decide whether or not I want to do the halter neck or attach the straps to the suit itself um, I do love this color I think it's an, a gorgeous like um, I think it's like this gorgeous warm sunshiny yellow and I'm really excited to have it in my swimsuit collection now hope you guys have enjoyed everything I've been up to in July and I'll see everyone next time Take care.